It's lit. All right, guys, what's up? Um, <sighs> day I don't even know of quarantine. I'm super bored, and uh, I got a weld test tomorrow. And it made me think about my first weld test I already I ever took. And man, I, I gotta help you guys out if you're gonna take your first weld test and you just you don't know you, you know what to expect. You don't know what to wear. You don't know what to bring. I'm gonna tell you right now. All right, I'm gonna help you guys out. If you don't know me, my name is Patrick Gowan. Um, I attended Lanier Technical College for welding. Um, came out with my MIG and TIG certificates. But, I mean, I've learned how to do all process. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty experienced. Uh, I've worked a couple welding jobs, mostly just production welding. Um, yeah, what, whatever welding job you're going into, whatever weld test you're about to take, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you guys what to bring because uh, it's pretty universal. So, first thing's a tire, okay? You know, for pants, you're gonna wanna wear either work pants or jeans. You're gonna have sparks flying around. You don't want sparks going into your pants because Trust me, it sucks. It hurts. For shoes, okay? Don't don't be wearing shoes at all, actually. Wear some steel-toed boots. That's what you're going to want to wear. Yeah, I'll show you guys what I personally wear. These are my favorite pants to wear. It's Dickies work pants. Um, you know, they're pretty casual, sleek, black, you know. I mean, they're good for, definitely if you want to get on a race team or something. But, yeah, and then <clears throat> steel toes. Always want to wear steel toes. Okay, so uh, with the, the bottom half aside... Um, doesn't really matter what shirt you wear, but uh, you're gonna want to bring a welding jacket. So let me find mine. Okay, so uh, this is what I wear. This is my Lincoln Electric uh, suede jacket. Um, works great. Keeps all the sparks off me. If you're doing a if you're doing a lot of overhead or if you're doing like stick welding or flux core, something that has like a lot of sparks, you know, you're definitely gonna want something heavy duty. So I definitely recommend getting one of these jackets. I think it was like 80 bucks, but uh, definitely worth it. Um, so yeah, make sure you have a welding jacket. And then uh, <clears throat> the obvious, you know, you're gonna wanna bring a hood, a welding helmet, uh, you know, fixed shade, auto darkening shade, whatever you want. Um, personally, I use, I just use a fixed shade. So when I'm about to weld something, I can't have it down like this. And look, I mean, it's black, so. You want to get where you're about to weld it and then make sure you can do that. So, you know, usually uh, usually helmets have little adjusters on the side where you can tighten it and loosen it. Yeah. And then last thing for a tire is uh, you're going to want something on your head, okay? So you're going to want, like, the best thing to bring is a welding cap, okay? Most welding caps, they're, uh, you know, summer leather. Uh, most are just, like, a very tough canvas material cap. It's like a beanie. And then at the... Uh, at the back, they have a little little tail that uh, it'll keep sparks from going into the back of your jacket. So, yeah. So, uh, I I definitely recommend bringing a uh, a welding cap if you've got one. If not, then just bring a beanie. You'll be fine. Or hey, what I used to do is I'd put my hood up like that, so no sparks can get in. And uh, yeah, you're good to go. So, yeah, just have something to protect your head from sparks. You don't want your hair catching on fire. All right, next, uh, next thing we're going to cover is your equipment that you want to bring. First things first, probably should have included this in a tire, but you're going to want to bring some welding gloves, of course. Um, you know, just suede leather welding gloves. Um, I think these are Radnor brand. I used to get these for free at my old job. I'd go through a pair either every other day or every three days. So, uh, yeah, I mean, m most likely your job is going to supply you with stuff like this um, if they're a big company. But if not, then, you know, make sure you stock up on these. Just as important, you're going to want to bring safety glasses because it doesn't matter where you are. They're probably going to re require you to wear safety glasses. So, yeah, have safety glasses and uh, don't put them in your tool bag like I do because... Uh, all scuffed up and then you can't see through them so so yeah don't don't put them in the tool bag like a dumbass like me all right so for tools um personally i just every weld test i go to i always bring my tool bag which this carries all of my welding supplies in it so the first tool you're going to want to bring is definitely a grinder the chances are you're probably not going to be using this at your first weld test unless you've got to like clean some metal before you weld it I, I always bring a grinder just because, uh, you know, this is this is probably the second 
most used tool that you're gonna have at a at any welding job is definitely your grinder. So make sure you bring a grinder. Just show them that you you know what's going on. All right. All right. Next, you know, want some measuring equipment because you never know at a weld test he might he might tell you, all right, you know. I want you to cut this piece of steel this long and then this piece of steel that long and then you know he's gonna he's gonna make you make the joints who, who knows I carry a, um, a metal ruler here and a tape measure everywhere I go so yeah just, uh, make, make sure you bring some measuring equipment all right next thing now these these tools here are very commonly used for stick welding or flux core welding you're probably not going to be required to have these if you're if you're doing MIG or TIG, especially not this, but you know this, you can use it to clean up any kind of weld. So this is a uh, this is a chipping hammer. Okay, after you do a stick weld, you're gonna have a layer of slag that you've gotta you gotta chip it off. All right, so that's what this is used for. Um, and then a wire brush, that's what you use to get off the slag. But you can you can use this for a million things. I mean, even if it's just a uh, a MIG or a TIG weld, you can still clean it up with this. You know, yeah. So. Even if it's not, uh, even if it's not a stick welding or a flux core welding job, it doesn't hurt to bring these just to show that you can do multiple processes. So, yeah, I always keep these in my welding welding bag. So, all right, now these uh, this is the problem with these. They're, they're magnets. They catch everything that's metal. Yeah, I always keep one of these magnets. They, you don't you don't have to have one of these, but uh. You know, I always make sure I keep this in my tool bag. It's got a, uh, it's got all kind of, kind of angles on here. It's good for positioning things, so then you can tack them. So I always keep a uh, one of these welding magnets in my, in my tool bag. You know, always bring some pliers with you. Usually, you're gonna want uh, welding pliers, which is commonly used by MIG welders. Um, but if you don't have those, then just bring these. You know, some needle nose pliers, whatever. You want to be able to snip your, the end of your, uh, your wire. So. Yeah, have some, have some pliers on deck. Even these will work. You know, some uh, some cutting pliers, whatever. I wish I had my my pliers to show you my big pliers, but I don't know what happened to them. Anyways, I use these a lot. Um, a lot of welders use these for all kinds of shit. Um, these are vice grips, where you can adjust them and uh, make them clamp down at different uh, measurements. So, yeah, they, they come in handy a lot. Let's say you just got done welding something and you got to go take it over to the quench bucket. Uh, you need some vice grips and then you can pick them up and you don't got to worry about them slipping out of your out of your pliers. So yeah, vice grips. That's about it for my tool bag. Um, depending on what job you're going to be working, you might need more, you might need less, who knows. But that's just what I keep in my personal tool bag. Okay, so yeah. But let's say let's say you're not going to bring any tools. Let's say you don't have these tools, then at least bring your safety glasses and your gloves, okay, along with your helmet and your jacket. Those are the main things you need. Um, all physical objects aside, don't go in there acting like you know everything because you don't, and you're going to pick up a lot of different uh, techniques working at every different welding job that you work at. You want to be open, okay? Be open to learn what they're trying to teach you. Okay, don't just act like you know everything because they're not going to like that. Okay, so <clears throat> especially if it's your first welding job, dude. Yeah, if they, if they try and teach you something and you don't act like you want to learn it, they're probably not going to hire you. So, yeah, be very open. Be humble, okay? Um, be ready to learn whatever they're going to throw at you. Also, be confident, okay? Most, most welders will admit uh, to flunking their first weld test like I did. I flunked my first weld test. I passed most of it, but then when it got to the thin materials that I had to weld, I was doing MIG welding, hot MIG welding, and I had never, uh, I had never welded thin stuff with you know, high wire feed speed and high voltage, so I ended up burning through um, all the thin pieces of steel. So yeah, that's what, uh, that's what kind of screwed me up on that weld test. and. Uh, I use that as a learning experience, okay? I, uh, the next day, I think, I actually went to school. I was, I had MIG class, and uh, I set up some, some T-joints of, uh, of thin material, and I learned, you know, I learned how to do it. And uh, that helped me out. And my next welding test that I took, which I actually, 
I aced it. I mean, I, I did great, and that actually got me a, a pretty good pay rate. Um, I was making $2 more than most everybody else. So, you know, prepare yourself, okay? That's the biggest thing is prepare yourself for that weld test. Um, sometimes they'll tell you what kind of weld test they're going to give you in the description of the job. They'll even, sometimes they'll tell you what, uh, they'll tell you what kind of joints they're going to give it to you. They'll say, okay, here's a T-joint, a butt joint, you know, you got to be able to do these, whatever. If that's the case, then just practice, 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 okay? Make, make some T-joints, make some butt joints, all right? Weld them out, you know, just do it over and over and over until you feel confident. Because uh, that's what's going to make you or break you is your confidence. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're confident and you've, you know you've done that type of weld tons of times, I mean, you're, you're probably going to be fine, you know. But if you're, uh, if you're real nervous and you're like, oh, I've, I've only done this maybe once or twice, you're probably going to be shaking. You know, there's going to be somebody watching you behind you. And uh, you're probably not gonna you're probably not gonna do it right. So just practice, all right. Get your practice in. You know, if you have a welder at home, or uh, if you're if you're going to school for welding, you know, just just practice, all right. I'm sure your instructor will let you practice if you've got a weld test the next day. I promise you that. So yeah, I've covered uh, a tire. I've covered the gear you need to bring, and uh, I've covered your attitude. So those are the three main things that's gonna make you or break you at a weld test. And uh, like I said, you know, just be confident, all right? And if you're not confident, you know, try your best. Wh whatever, you, whatever you mess up on or whatever keeps you from getting that job, remember that and work on that so then you can pass the next one. But I'm making this video to try and keep you guys from flunking your first weld test like most of us do. So I'm probably gonna watch this video over and be like, oh, I forgot to say this, forgot to say that, whatever. Uh, if you guys got some some uh, some good tips I left out, leave them in the comments. Um, yeah, I tried my best here, so yeah, I hope I've helped you guys out, and uh, good luck on your uh, on your weld test. Take it easy, guys.